Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the latest, the official podcast of the Brock Press, where we take you beyond the headlines and do a deep dive into some of the many interesting articles written by our team this week. My name is Noah Nickel. I'm the editor-in-chief of the Brock Press and host of the latest, and today I'm joined by uh, editor-at-large Jonah Dayton, and for the first time, assistant news editor Devani Shah. How are you both doing? Great. Thanks for having me today. Pinch hitting for Holly, who is out sick with bronchitis, I believe. Yeah, sadly, Holly is out sick this week. Uh, we miss her, uh, but we still have some of her classic opinions to talk about today, so she's here in spirit. Uh, but we're glad you're able to make it last minute, Devani and Philin. That's great. Uh, we have a great, great, you know, collection of articles. We had even more we wanted to talk about. Uh, so that's always good to have to uh, whittle down. Well, it'd be nice to talk about all of them, but I know we ramble too long, so we got to keep it to three. But uh, with that, let's get uh, let's get into the articles. All right. So the first article that we're going to talk about was written by Haytham Nawaz, our general assistant. He wrote a uh, what Noah called a beginner's guide esque article about course readings, and he shared some tips for how to do them, or if you do them in the first place. He shared some tips for how to improve on that. Um, and we we're talking about we're all I'm fourth year, you guys are fifth year students, so we've been doing this for quite a while. Haytham is uh, I believe second year and uh, seemed quite with it for a second year student. Um, so just wanted to get your thoughts on some of the tips that Haytham suggested, any of them stand out to you and do you use any of them? Yeah. To start, Haytham has his life very put together. <laughs> God bless him. He is on the ball more than me for sure. I think it's I also just, you guys, just but... important to note that he's like, he is an English major. So he does also like, not only are like, I'm Spima, my readings are like 19 pages and I'm like groaning, right? <laughs> he's got like. 80 page like chapters and <laughs> like yeah legit like fat books on a yeah. weekly basis yeah i remember when holly's brief stint in english not to keep bringing her up while she's not here but i remember her, her stacks of books she'd go into the office with <laughs> does not seem fun to me but uh no but in so many areas hatham is just killing it so kudos to him way to go uh, me, on the other hand, not so much. <laughs> not big on readings, as Jonah alluded to and looked, at, gave me a side eye while you read the, in his intro there. Uh, yeah, not huge on readings. Uh, first year, a little bit, although I definitely wasn't using any of his tips. I was like, just going like, okay, let's read all of my readings in one sitting and stay up till 2 a.m. and just get none of it, retain absolutely none of it. Uh, so that gave me a bad, you know, like a bad taste in my mouth for doing readings I pretty much exclusively uh you know we'll do like intros and conclusions for um and abstracts for um for seminar participation or forum posts more common these days with online courses uh and I do actually read sources for essays though which uh, takes a little bit more time but uh, in terms of like weekly no I'm I'm definitely do I'm definitely an intro conclusion type of person which is really the tip I would <laughs> that was one of his like scan effectively yeah but not even scan like exclusive like right. don't even look at the rest <laughs> what about you Devon? um you know i actually i think in the last couple of years i've gotten a little bit more um purposeful with my readings like i definitely agree with noah where in first year i would uh tr at least try to get you know beginning to end but i think especially in business it's a lot of it is kind of maybe walking you through an example of the type of question or um, it's stuff that you can kind of practice on your own. So you don't really need to like pick up all the nitty gritty details. Um, but yeah, I think some of Haytham's tips were probably things I should have done better in my first couple of years. Took me a while to kind of get a grip on this stuff, but definitely the um, finding a good place to study and like having a, a just like a, a space dedicated to it instead of studying in, in your bed, which I'm still guilty of. I think that was my big takeaway from his piece. Yeah, that's true. I'm, I mean, the amount of work and quality of work I can get done if I just whip myself into gear and like get in here and sit at this desk is like way beyond when I'm just working in different parts of my home and like contorting myself on my couch and like not sitting properly. <laughs> like if I'm here and focused in my chair and there's, you know, there's obviously no distractions in this office, there's nothing, yeah. <laughs> there's nothing here. <laughs> so yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's absolutely true. Whether it's readings or not anything, you'll, 
you'll just get more work done in a, a an environment designed to get work done. Yeah, I would say of this year, there's one class where I have actually done the readings every week and done them all like start to finish. Um, but it's that's also sort of like that class is very reading heavy. Like literally, if you don't do the readings, you will not do well. But I also like it's a very it's my favorite class. So I, I also don't really mind doing the readings for that class. But I'll never forget in first year, I had to take some like humanity credit. I took like some bogus like myth of whatever, like some classics class. And I remember the, the class was at noon and I woke up at nine and was like, let's I'll do the reading before class. I'll, I'll grab some breakfast and walk into class and I open my computer and it was 90 pages long because it was like a story <laughs> and I shut the computer and went on to uh, like spark notes or whatever and like Wikipedia yeah. the summary. Yeah, it's part of why I hate theory courses because political science, you kind of have like it's it almost splits almost down the middle of like contemporaneous stuff and like theory courses and it's basically like philosophy but like you're reading philosophers but like their political output right like all like the famous philosophers that any of that you might have heard of like plato and like aristotle and stuff like they have like normal like philosophic just like thinking stuff or whatever you want to call it like your your run of the mill philosophy but then they have the political philosophy and like all of them have that so basically these courses are just philosophy courses i hate them because it's literally that it's like you get assigned one class i took you got assigned there was four books like four full like two to three hundred page like books people had written Oof. in like in philosophy speak so it's like not easy to write it doesn't go down yeah. easy so like i avoid those courses like the plague because they're all <laughs> like that and it's so annoying uh but then the others are kind of like what you were to mention with spima it's like it's a lot of like news articles from like websites like online news articles and like sub 20 page academic journal now, all of ours articles. are academic journals but they're just short like re yeah. relatively short but yeah. i i cannot sub 20 pages is pretty yeah low. yeah sub 20 pages <laughs> or like hovering around the 20 page mark but i cannot for the life of me like read Peer, peer reviewed as it is takes me so much longer than anything else because it's there's no flow to it because there's a million brackets and citations and then when you add in the fact that it's like online like i can't read on my computer i'm just it's so like my i'm rubbing my eyes constantly and so the peer reviewed takes me like an hour to get through like a 20 page peer reviewed reading on my computer i think my the one tip that i felt like was was really good was when hayden was talking about kind of effectively scanning um i think especially with courses, um, as you get into sort of upper your business, a lot of it is case based, especially like your actual evaluation stuff. Um, and being able to kind of get through a 15, 16 page case, um, and then pull the stuff that's actually important to actually come up with your recommendation. Uh, it, it's just not possible for you to pick up like every single detail, but kind of getting used to the idea of just skimming through and figuring out what's important um, saves you a lot of time. I don't know if your classes have like the same layout as mine, but like, do you, the peer reviewed articles, is there like a literature review in all of them that you guys have to read? No, no. Okay. No. So, that's yeah, not common. So. Really? Okay. So it's very common in speed, but there's like the intro and then right away they get into the literature review and it's basically like summarizing what like previous researchers have done. Easy skip. Cause mm -hmm. uh, why I don't need to know this. So like, and that's like five pages worth of just, and so that's like a pretty, pretty easy. Do you have to write literature reviews when you do do we no yeah, but it, no. it's just like usually like i know the important bits that i need to know i'll intro is like a page so that's quick and then basically literature review i'll scan at the at the best sometimes i'll just skip it and then go right to methodology and like it's, start reading from there anytime i've seen it i mean i, I probably just gloss over to, like my eyes completely glaze over because yeah. i would never ever read it yeah right because if it's for an essay you can't cite the literature review because they're talking about other yeah literature. exactly so like <laughs> there's there's zero value to me as a student reading the literature review yeah there there ain't much <laughs> even for anyone like who else is reading <laughs> it's kind of funny that we're all journalists and we all hate doing our reading so much <laughs> it's academic readings that's like yeah brutal because it's there's the, this is what like this is why i hate them so much is because there is no flow to them with all the brackets and all the citations and all like the facts and it's just not an enjoyable read. Yeah. And I say I don't like reading. Meanwhile, I read like 15,000 words a week. A Monday. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Every Monday. So uh, I do my fair share. It's just, and even then I still do it like for assignments and stuff. I'm still doing it. But like mm -hmm. the weekly, like I'm out, I'm out for 
seminars. I especially political oh, God, science. Yeah. You're it's like remixes of the same classes basically like throughout. <laughs> so like even if there's might be introducing a slightly new concept, you can just go back to the one that you, you did read about. Even when I'm like leading seminars, well. like I frame my questions with knowing that nobody has done the reading. Exactly. So if I ask exactly. like, what is this research? Like, no, they're not going to give me anything. So I got to ask like those big, broad softball questions. It's like the inverse of the, like, nobody will admit to eating at McDonald's, but then they're the biggest like fast food company in the world. It's like mm. everyone <laughs> pretends that they're like the best student ever and they do all these readings. But <laughs> I mean, obviously we're not, we know we're not like, yeah. we've all been in seminars where it's like dead air and you, and you can see it on people's faces that, they're not just quiet because they're they're not just sitting there because they're shy. Yeah, <laughs> they, have, they have no idea what's going on. And the second article, as we promised, <laughs> is another one of Holly's hot take opinion pieces that she loves to talk about. But she's not here, so we can talk about it anyways, and it's all good. Uh, so she talked about smart appliances. Uh, it's one of her grumpy old man opinions as she lovingly refers to them in her articles. Uh, but yeah, she talks about how they're going uh, too far with the whole smart appliance deal. Um, her example is her parents' dryer that has Wi-Fi capabilities uh, to start the dryer when you're not there through a phone app, uh, which she dismantles in about five <laughs> seconds about why that's the dumbest <laughs> thing ever. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, and then she just kind of goes on to complain about Smart appliances, which, hey, I'm, I mean, from one grumpy old man to another, I, I can relate. Uh, but what is all of uh, your guys' thoughts on the smart appliance epidemic? Um, I think, well, as much, I'm not trying to defend, you know, Samsung or whoever, whoever made the Holly's parents dryer. But um, I think the point was, you know how sometimes it's like cheaper to run your laundry or your dryer like at night because the energy rates are lower. I think maybe that's the purpose. Is you that can, true? Like, schedule it. Yeah. I had no idea. After like 7 p.m. or something, it's cheaper. Uh, so I think that was the purpose. Still a little bit silly, but maybe that's what the point of that was. But I do agree. I remember my mom, she, we had to get a new dishwasher last year and she made a whole fuss about me not being able to like set up the Wi-Fi capabilities and whatever. And frankly, like I just, I didn't really care enough to actually take time out of my schedule to do it. Um, because like what value does that add really? <laughs> like how is that easier, especially for, you know, a 50 year old woman, how is it easier to do it from your phone versus just pressing start? Right. And like, what is the savings of time you know what i mean right like, where does the value come because i i do kind of understand oh no i do understand what you're saying about the dryer the timing of when you run things changes how much you pay whatever but i mean holly raises the great point it's like so you're leaving your wet because you know when you leave wet clothes in the washer they get that kind of yeah. smell yeah, yeah. To them. you got to redo it right so like how long are you leaving them yeah. <laughs> done like i and then you also need to have moved it over already to the dryer. So you're pretty well half, you, you've had to already clean the lint trap, right? You've had right. to put your uh, your uh, fabric sheet in there. Like you're already down there. You're pretty much there. Like you've pretty much done the whole <laughs> process. And like, just hit the button, just do it. <laughs> I, I guess if you wanna, like, if you're really cheap and you gotta save those like yeah. couple cents, cause even then, like all of our appliances are really energy efficient, right? So like, especially if you have one that has Wi-Fi capabilities, <laughs> like it's not gonna be like, guzzling power right so it's like you're gonna save those few cents to have like wet smelly like that kind of like nasty smell to your laundry right. and like <laughs> i'm out i don't like i don't have any smart appliances like neither do my parents so i don't really know what all the powers are the features are um but i think fridges are the most common right like the are smart they? fridge i don't A know smart fridge i thought so I've heard What's of that. smart about it? I don't. You, I do you, not have you get never it. you've never heard of the uh, fridges that have like I, like a screen, a yes, big screen I have on the seen front. Those, but that makes it smart then, just having a screen. Well, no, because it's like hooked up to your your phone. Okay. It's, oh, okay. I didn't know if this was a real thing. It is. But I it's did definitely see it on a an thing. Episode of Modern Family where it like tells you when you're running low on certain ingredients in your fridge, or oh it'll my. it'll. And I think this part was an exaggeration for television, but it was like it would tell you things you can make with just the ingredients you have in your fridge. <laughs> Which I was like, honestly, for someone like me, that would be really helpful because otherwise, like, I just run to the grocery store every day because I forget something right. or the other. Right. This Samsung 
smart fridge, like half of the door is a screen and I'm going to kill time by throwing it to Noah and looking at all the features. <laughs> uh, I just, it, it feels very money grabby to me because like I'm, I'm perfectly capable of opening my fridge door to see what I need. <laughs> uh, and so I, th I'm thinking they're kind of like, yeah, so we kind of got to the, the point where fridges are, they do their job. They're great. They do mm -hmm. their job. Yeah. So what like crap can we just throw on top of it so that yeah. people try to buy another fridge, right? To like, to try to entice you. It kind of, it kind of reminds you of TVs where it's like, there are no, like I 8K. think smart TVs are valuable. No. Yeah. But I didn't mean from the smart angle. I just mean like TVs in terms of their quality of like the output. It's like they're in like 8K and even like 1080 TVs, which like still look great for most things are like dirt cheap right so like tv tech has just kind of been like mastered right so then the last few years you've seen or well now it's been quite a few years since this but you had like the 3d home tvs and you had like the ones that are like rounded you've seen those where like the edges are like rounded a little bit no I haven't there's seen like ones. there's just like a lot of gimmicky like curved like tvs that. yeah my uncle had one and returned it after like a few weeks he was like <laughs> It's perfect if I'm looking straight at it, but if I'm coming at it from an angle, it's awful. Right, right. And they have it set up in for display, perfect angle. Yeah, right. So all these gimmicky things to try to make you part right. with your perfectly workable. Like that's to me what all this smart yeah. stuff all is. All right. So this I, I have some benefits in air quotes about smart fridges. You can control the temperature from your phone. So I why are you changing the temperature? Like <laughs> who changes the temperature of their fridge? I don't know, but the, you, this one, I suppose like has the most value. You can use voice control. So I don't know what you need to tell your fridge to do. Like they, all of the points are hey, fridge, keep running and stay there. <laughs> all of these points are like easily redundant by walking over to your fridge. Like this next one says you can keep track of the expiration dates. You can easily compile a shopping list and yeah, my phone. What? I can do that. My no, phone. I know, I but this this is saying app, you can fridge. you can oh, see not the notes app, right? Yeah, no, <laughs> with the fridge app. Um, it has like a camera, I suppose. So on on the inside, so you can see what's in your fridge remotely from you can your see phone. Who's, you can see who's the little elf turning the light off yeah. every time. You can so <laughs> I finally I, see. I guess if you're like out at a grocery store and you're like, oh, do I have milk? You can check. Go to the fridge cam. Go the fridge cam. You know what? I do actually see value in that. No, I, I agree. The last one, the last one has some, but like, like you can check the expiration dates. That's, that is a moot point if you open your fridge and like look at the bottom of the thing. Right. If you're checking the expiration date, it's probably expired. Well, let's yeah. Just put that but also there. like sometimes they, the expiration date is really like four days after the suggested date. You know, like some. It's and it, it's an arbitrary. That's another opinion. Yeah. Yes, if Holly doesn't write it, I will. Okay. Hell, BS the. Yeah, what does best are. before truly exactly. mean? Because like I'm okay with if it's at its best, like I'm okay with it being at its mediocre. <laughs> it's most average. Yeah. Some of the things that like yogurt, I'm always like, it's like best before the seventh. Like you're probably okay until like the ninth. Isn't it already like? Isn't yogurt like mold? Right? Isn't like bacteria? Like I, yeah, that's, I think yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like maybe that's it's a, probably just going to get more yogurty right over time. <laughs> like better before. <laughs> Yeah, I, well, this kind of got all of us thinking, including me when I edited Holly's article, I added a link to a smart hairbrush because I just looked up stupid smart devices and it was the first thing that came <laughs> up, an article from like 2017 about this smart hairbrush, but it got all of us kind of thinking. Uh, so what are some bizarre smart appliances? You found the fork, right? Yeah, I actually am like so intrigued by it. I, I don't know, maybe it, maybe I am the market here, but um, it's this fork where if you're eating too quickly, um, it'll send you a notification on your phone so you know to eat more slowly and digest your food better, I guess. I don't really know the specifics, but I will be honest. Like there was a brief second where I was like, I kind of want to see what that's like. Um, but then I realized it would probably be kind of silly but anyways i it definitely piqued my interest yeah it's it is i don't even have words to explain <laughs> this the one that 
in a similar fashion that makes a little more sense to me is a toothbrush. I've, I've heard like some of the electric toothbrushes have not for, well, actually, yeah, for brushing too fast and brushing too hard. Cause that actually does oh. like damage to your teeth. So that to me makes sense, but exactly. But the eating thing, it's like to help <laughs> you digest, like what is the purpose of them telling me this? I think the, and we mentioned this before we recorded too, that I think the big deal is that they're trying to, just basically get you to sign up for some stupid app you never use, give them your email, have something on your phone, right? It's really just to harvest more metadata from you, which like, I'm not some conspiracy theorist, like that's what they're doing. And I'm also not like against, well, like I'm kind of against it, but like I, I contribute to it in a lot of ways, but it's like, if there's, if there's completely ridiculous and stupid ways to give people more of my data, I'm not going to do it, right? Like, I don't see the value. Like, my fork works fine. My fridge is fine. The toaster one was shocking. Like, the, the toaster smart toaster. Is fine. What, da what data are they are they getting from well, that? That's, Aside it, from that's your what I mean. You're signing up for an app. You're downloading this app to your phone. Right. You're using their. They, they know what kind of. On it. They they're like tracking your something. bread. <laughs> what, what kind of bagel do you use? They probably could sell info to like bread producers. I don't like honestly like even in uh, I in uh, John Deere like tractors and mm. stuff they have like tracking things in those to like for like fertilizer selling and like stuff oh. like that that they give this data to those companies so like there's way more money in the data than selling you the thing which is why you know a lot of smart tech like alexa right. and stuff mostly yeah the the home assistants are what freak me out the most and i don't know why we, we have one right here no, I know that one I did actually turn off and it's not working how it's intended. I just wanted a clock that had a cool face on it. But the fact that they like give them away all the time and they're like $10, it's like, right. how does that not stand out to people that like you are the product? Right. Dummy. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I gotta be honest, like, I love having a Google home where I can yeah. just be like, hey, Google, do like all these things for me that I don't feel like doing. Oh, <laughs> speak of the devil. Is that oh, not? No, that's the Google. That's the Google <laughs> thing. Oh no, we are being listened to. Look at how without freaky a, without a, that is. I don't know it's if that picked up by the, the mic, but we just set off a "Hey Google" thing. Oh my god, it's not even connected to the internet. That stupid thing. She gets me whenever yeah. I need her. Do you like? Is that an Apple Watch you have? Yes. And is that like you use it every day? Yeah, I feel like okay. To be honest, I know Smart that like, the whole cool. point of the Apple Watch was mostly for like fitness, um, and. I know it may seem like I am, but I'm not, I'm not very, I'm not a huge athlete by any means, but I honestly, I got it as a gift and it's just, it's like nice being able to just, when I get like a notification or like an email or, you know, when Noah's messaging us on Slack at midnight, like it's nice being able to just see it right on my wrist. Um, but in terms of the actual like smart capabilities, I was kind of fine before that. Yeah. Th to clarify, it was 1030 and we were all messaging in the podcast group chat to be fair. Uh, but yeah, this, the watches are actually really nice. I yeah. actually, I had an Apple watch. I got rid of it just cause mine was getting a little old anyways. I didn't replace it just cause they're, they've gone up in price considerably mm -hmm. since, since I got them, but they do look nice. And I, I honestly prefer the style of the smart watches that are the round, yeah. like the round face. Oh yeah. I yeah, think yeah. They look really nice. But. I think as most regular watches are round. If not all. No, yeah, yeah. Normal watch. But like, that's what I mean. The, the smart watch, a lot of them went square yeah. and like rectangle. But then there's some smart watches that are like the normal watch face of like the circle. And I think it looks um, much better, but they're not Apple. So I can't buy it. So <laughs> I know. Yeah. I got to have all of your things like I know. aligned. I love when they're all because like they show up on the device list and like, I just, I like that. It is nice. It is. Yeah. I do like being able to check messages from my computer mm -hmm. as well as my phone. And I, I mean, the smartwatch has kind of proved that there is value to the smart and the smart TV. The I think the smart TV, TV is, is great. The smart TV is the best. Yeah. But again, it's the least intrusive and like the most logical, right? Yes. Like that's what I think is like the recipe for the best smart device. Like, because right. I, I mean, like realistically, who has cable anymore? Or if you do, like, do you really use it? Um, I feel like so many people now with like, Netflix and Disney Plus and Hulu and HBO and, you know, God knows how many different services. It just makes more sense to stream everything mm -hmm. um, than it does to pay for, you know, your monthly cable subscription. And, and then you kind of are limited to what you can watch and when. Or right. just use your parents' cable like I do. Yeah. <laughs> I just have the Bell app. But sign like, in with their email address. I, yeah, see, that's 
the most value that cable providers have found is that they give you access to the app now. I don't know if Rogers does, but like Bell is great yeah, for that. They all, I think, I think they all do. Uh, and it's that is the best thing that they've got going is basically they yeah. just gave up on cable and said here you can buy access to our app which has like stuff that's actually being shown on cable right so like mm -hmm. live and current things so that's probably the best thing they got going but the what you're saying about streaming stuff is like when that stuff started you know it was like you'd have to you'd have to basically have like a, a video game system was like the main way yeah. that people were watching it right mm -hmm. and so the, and then you get like the little boxes, which like are cheaper and it makes sense. But it's like if it's just built into the TV, right, that that is the logical next step. Right. So like the smartness in that sense just makes sense, you know, but then there's no one clamoring for like the smart. To you know what I mean? Like there's nothing about the toaster that has ne necessitated it to become smart. Like, I don't know, Noah, because <laughs> I saw a picture where this person every morning for her kids breakfast, she would do like a little picture of, of Mickey Mouse on the toast. And it was just really exciting. Um, it is cute. like the Mickey actually, pancakes. It would make me very happy if someone gave me toast with Mickey Mouse on it. Um, so like I was saying before we started recording, is it something I would spend my own money on? Probably not. Would I put it on my wedding registry? Absolutely. Yeah, they, this will be taking over the um, the wedding registry industry, all these nonsense smart devices, and also like the uh, the airport like overpriced stores. You know what I mean? The ones that are like in the airport. Yeah, everything's like <laughs> they jack them up. <laughs> it's just gonna be stores that sell like random smart garbage that no one wants. Smart luggage. Yes, and that's probably a thing. I've, I've seen the ones that sure that's people, a thing. like a little. Like a little like pet, like a hands-free suitcase. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I think that that actually makes sense. A little bit, right? I mean, or you can just roll you. it. Like, how hard is rolling? Yeah, but then you can you can be on your phone. You can like, I kind of like it. I don't know. What if that, it like some? But that's the thing. Someone could like hack it. You know, yeah, zoom it around your, your license or your license. Your luggage just like it's going with you, and then just like beeline the opposite direction <laughs> you have to like chase it well <laughs> like there's this kid. episode of superstore where glenn the manager who's like older he forgets that he has the remote for like this cart robot that they have that kind of collects the carts and puts them back where they're supposed to go uh he forgets it's in his pocket and because he's already so scared of robots taking over the world and now this robot's following him around the store it's basically entire the entire premise of the episode is is him just running away from this cart robot but is that a new show uh it's new on netflix okay um but basically it kind of just follows um like a, a employees out of superstore um and their their antics huh. but anyways I... yeah it was pretty funny and it kind of reminded me of, of my when I was story reading this um <laughs> about the, the cart robot or even when you go to for sushi the little robots that bring you your food now um, i've never had never been to what? one of those places <laughs> what you okay it's so i have cool. a person bringing is that a food. niagara falls thing well i think they do it here too oh, really? um but okay. also, like, why did you say that? Like, it's a bad thing. No, no, no. I just meant, awesome. like, new things will come out in, like, downtown Niagara. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. they'll do, like, okay. more stuff like that. I've, I mean, I don't get sushi that often, say, for outside of the office. But that sounds kind of no, weird. No, it's, it's really cool. Because you know how when you go for all you can eat, you just put it in the iPad. And mm -hmm. then it, they bring it out to you. Mm -hmm. Now it's the robot. It just, like, kind of comes up the aisle and, and brings you your wontons. It's awesome. <laughs> but then, like, what if because you know sometimes you can talk your way out of like oh yeah i know i ordered this and it, there's some left but i don't want to pay for it and like because you know how they make you like pay for when you have leftovers i can't relate i could probably eat <laughs> two people's worth at all you can eat sushi so i just i could see them like blocking you into your seat and like not moving because like the robot just cannot be it's like no <laughs> you have you to pay it. you have to pay or eat it <laughs> i'm i'm continuing to think of the smart luggage thing i actually do think there's a way because like if you can track your suitcase that would solve so many lost yeah. luggage, missing bag scenarios, you know, because you can say, oh, this is they're in Atlanta instead of yep. whatever. That'd be There's actually those, those yeah. Apple like uh, air tags or something. Yeah, that that's a new release. thing I've seen. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's kind of that's exactly what it does is you can put it on like your keys or on your oh, whatever the heck. Yeah. And then that you is, can use find my iPhone to find I think there's stuff. a there's some value in being able to track your bags. Right. And our last article this week was actually written by me. 
Uh, and I talked a little bit about Gen Z and how they're uh, now kind of reaching the end of their post high school education and, and starting to enter the professional workforce. And I talked a little bit about how that's sort of changed workplace culture in the last couple of years, especially, um, and how, you know, as they continue to take up more and more space in the workplace, how they're going to be changing dynamics uh, based on kind of their own expectations and attitudes towards their work. Um, so I wanted to get your thoughts, maybe um, when you're thinking about employment, would you be willing to take a bit of a pay cut if it meant working for a company that was maybe a little bit more ethical or where you'd be doing more meaningful work? It depends how big the pay cut is and depends what <laughs> what the work is. There's not much pay to cut. I work yeah, I much for minimum <laughs> wage. So. <laughs> no, it's, I find that tough because not to like lawyer out on anyone, but it's like define ethical and like define meaningful. It's like there's such a, I feel like more often than not, this stuff is being used by like really just gross and scummy companies to like sound awesome. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen these ads. You lately, can go to the bathroom but, now. Oh, yeah, yeah. At Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you use the washroom. Uh, I don't know if you've seen these ads lately uh, on YouTube, but there was one for Amazon uh, that stuck out to me. It's like this guy and like, an, it's trying to be like inspirational and like, telling the story about this guy that works for Amazon. Oh, I think I, I think I might have seen this. He literally says like, I saw an opening and I applied for it and I got it and I took it. And like, and it's like set to like inspiration as if he's like, it was just bizarre, like how he talked about it. But then a few others, uh, Rogers and RBC, I've seen a ton of ads for, and they, um, they have like, they're like talking about like, we're, we're donating to, build more green spaces and an increase equity. And they literally are like saying it like that, like how I'm saying, like just random, like yeah. lines that don't connect together, like right after each other. It's like, we're investing in like equality and like, like expressing your, words. yeah. And I'm like, man, you're the same scummy company you were six months ago before you had this ad. It's like, I don't know. I'm, I'm again, I'm, I'm the cynical one. I'm, I have to do the job of two people since Holly's not here to join me on my <laughs> ethical tire or cynical tirades. But um, yeah, I think, I think a lot of it is played up. You know what I mean? Especially right. if a pay cut's involved, mm -hmm. RBC is going to be happy to give you a pay cut any day, right? If it means if you're going to, if they can give you any excuse to make you want your pay, pay right. cut, they're going to be like, great, awesome. Let's do it. So it's like, I'm a little weary is basically what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, it depends on the company. Depends on the work, depends on if I feel they're genuine. But like, if I somehow land some sweet gig with a company like RBC, it's like, I'm not willing to take a pick because I know you're scummy. So like, right. give me, let me at least profit off of you. Like, at least let me make some money off of your scumminess. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think like when I was doing some of my research for this article, it was, it was more um, kind of just in terms of just the, the data was showing that. I think Gen Z cares a little bit more about the um, ethics of, of the companies that they're choosing to work for. Even I know kind of end of the day, like you need money, you need your paycheck. But I think uh, there's a, a bigger focus on especially like environmental impact or, um, you know, discrimination in the workplace, things like that. People care a lot more about now than they did, let's say, 20 years ago. Um, so, and then in terms of just I, I think Gen Z is starting to steer away from your classic like nine to five work on your spreadsheets and go home. I think that they are looking for maybe more meaningful ways to, to give back, but within reason, you know, got to put food on the table somehow. Um, yeah. I think you're right though. Yeah. And uh, I think just in general, I think, cause a lot of, I, I was doing some research on just demographic data and, and Gen Z is so much more diverse, like racially, culturally, um, like the, they're, I think they value that a lot more and that they, um, they recognize when that's not necessarily being portrayed in the workplace. Um, so I remember reading an article where someone was talking about, they noticed when they went to interview for a company, they, all of the interviewers were male, um, all of their top management was male, um, and predominantly white males. And that was something that they actually took note of. And it, it kind of turned them away from wanting to work there. Um, wow. I'm just not sure if that's necessarily a conversation that would have been had however long ago. Yeah. I think part of the reason that that stuff is able to happen is kind of a product of that, like, uh, staying closer to home longer. Uh, I think 
we've kind of and it we talked about this a few weeks ago when we talked about the pandemic stuff and well like cost of living stuff but also like the workplace stuff and like how we're having lots of job openings and like you know you you take the boot off of people's necks for like a minute and they have a chance to like catch their breath right like they have a chance to realize okay like what do i actually want here right and that's kind of like what the pandemic stuff did for people right you give people um ability to work from home monthly checks ability to work from home which means generally you work less but you even if you still get your stuff done you're or also just you're not wasting yeah because you're not driving an hour each way exactly and you're not stuck at the office whether you have work to do or not right so there was things that it kind of facilitated that gave more leverage to workers Mm -hmm. and i think that's kind of what you're talking right like in in the case of young like people our age like we're not really i'm in no position to move out sorry mom and dad (laughs) um after i graduate it's gonna be a few years or at least a year or so but uh yeah i think that's becoming more and more common right so it's like if you're not worried about okay if i don't take this job i don't have a place to live right like i don't have a house i think that is allows you to Mm -hmm. have bigger demands like you're talking about like things beyond just yeah will you pay me and can i have the job like today right like (laughs) what do you guys think though in terms of like the distinction between generations i know we were talking about this earlier um I think when we looked at the data, Gen Z is anyone born between, what was it? It was like 97 to 2012. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that's a pretty big age gap. I don't know. What, do you, what are your guys' thoughts on that? I don't How do they uh, decide on 97, not 96, like 97? Yeah, I, it's probably, I'm guessing it would be like demographic data of just like the number of kids born, right? Because you do have those slumps. Like obviously we wouldn't notice it on like an individual level. Right. But like when you look at the data, it, it does kind of like go like a little bit of a wave right because like you just kind of hit those pockets of time where you have like you're on the up and like you're just hitting this right age where people are kind of you know things are all connecting right like Mm -hmm. yeah that's why we have like average age where people can move out and where they're making x amount of money and right like yeah all that stuff kind of connects and so you see like that kind of like parabolic like swing of like where you have those people who are reaching that same point in their lives roughly in the same time and then you have those periods where it kind of where you start to see the decline of that and it's just kind of like it's just like a less common period of time where things were happening for people and like when people were born like plays into it and stuff like that so i feel like it has something to do with that i think you're kind of it's kind of like marking those periods of like increase but i don't actually (laughs) that was a long way to say i don't know but i'm i'm that's kind of my hunch to it right i don't know I think it's, I mean, if I was talking to someone born in 2012, like if I was talking to a (laughs) nine-year-old. An eight-year-old, yeah, nine-year-old. It's it's hard for me to believe that we're in the same generation just because I feel like we grew up so differently. Um, Like, I I don't know. Like, there's so many younger kids in my family that I'm like, you know, they'll they'll tell me about these new words that they learned on TikTok. And I'm like, (laughs) I don't don't understand what you're saying to me right now. Yeah, Um, that might be the un, uh, like the unaccounted for, like variable or whatever of just how rapidly things change right Mm -hmm. like in especially like the last 10 years how much that's just like yeah that's what we were talking about off air was that it's like the the real divide was like when people started growing up with like technology and screens versus those who didn't right as a good as a good like the nine-year-olds are probably going to start using their smart toasters a lot earlier than we would (laughs) necessarily they wouldn't be laughing at it like we were (laughs) Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, we're, we're new to the workplace, Gen Z, right? Like we're, none of us are graduated yet, but like you will be next year and you, you didn't miss a year, right? Like, no, I'm, I'm, this is my last year. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. So you'll do like the normal four years. Yeah. We're five years. Mm -hmm. So we're just like slightly delayed, but like even most of my friends are just kind of getting into it. Even if they have graduated, like they're, they're still kind of in that applying for like the career job and have just kind of started full-time work of the thing that they were doing before right you know, like it's that transition time so i'm curious that like i think the impact will only grow is what i'm saying it's like <laughs> we've only had yeah because they're just starting <laughs> we're just starting that i mean yeah i think we are we are a market difference and personally i just because of my way i see the world i think it has most to do with that kind of material side that like we're we are staying home longer so we have basic needs met and so work is kind of like our requirements for work are greater Mm -hmm. 
you know what I mean? Like higher on that kind of scale of like need because right. we're, our needs are met, our basic needs. And so we're trying to go beyond that, which I don't, I mean, I'm not saying it as bad or good. I just think that's kind of the reason for that. Right. But what do you think? Um, <laughs> no, I agree. I think like when I think about my parents, like I'm, you know, we, we immigrated to Canada when I was really young, but you know, my dad, when he came here, he didn't necessarily have the time to look for like the perfect job that fit his qualifications. Like he, he had to go get diapers and, and whatever other stuff kids need. Well, I don't know. Um, <laughs> food, so he I was think. working. I yeah, think something, I'm sure something along those lines. <laughs> um, so yeah, he didn't really have a whole lot of choice there. And I think there was one point where my dad was just working three jobs that were completely like unrelated to what he had studied just because he needed to, I mean, he needed to take care of our family. But now, you know, after 20 years of experience in the industry, like now I think he has a lot more say in what he wants to do. Um, but still, I think for us, like growing up and now entering the workforce, I think it's a lot easier for us to say like, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. Mm -hmm. Um, and to quit. Yeah. You know, like, like I think like for <laughs> even my dad, he's worked at the same company for 20 years. Like mm -hmm. he, because you know, it's where he learned all of everything he knows basically. And it just, it, I guess the idea of quitting is so like dramatic for him. Shouldn't versus... you choose, like, shouldn't you get fired so you can get severance rather than quit? I mean, yes, that but too. <laughs> then you can't use it on your resume and it's kind of, uh, it's a little iffy, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think part of the, like we talk about how jobs are hard to get like permanent jobs, but I don't, at the same time, there's something about people our age who even when faced with a permanent job, they still don't necessarily stay there that long. Like they still aren't like as inclined to stay. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I'm not trying to like, like I want a permanent job on paper, like in my head. Yeah, I do want one. Right. Like I, mm -hmm. I don't want to have to like job searching is stressful and annoying and right. Like, and it causes you to like introspect too much and it just, yeah. <laughs> you know, like you just get too self-critical about it. So it is nice. The idea in my head of a permanent job, but then like anytime I've been in that position, even if I mean like permanent part-time, but still permanent I'm like, I just kind of get that itch to leave after like a year or two. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know about you guys. I agree. I think, I think maybe we just get bored a little easier. Um, and maybe it has to do with sort of what we were talking about with the technology and like just having <laughs> exposure to so many different things at the same time. Um, it's easy to kind of get bored of what's right in front of you. Um, Cause yeah, I feel the exact same way. I mean, I've, I've worked at my current job for just over a year now and I'm like, okay, time for a change. Um, yeah. <laughs> You mentioned like the nine to five thing sort of being a thing of the past, right? I, which I agree. Um, I also think that like, I don't think anybody is wearing like a suit to work every day anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that what is are you talking about, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm definitely not wearing sweatpants. <laughs> yeah. And a t-shirt right now. Um, but that's another thing that like, I think we're sort of realizing like little, little silly to make, like if you're a lawyer, like, yeah, okay, I get it. But if you're working, at like a newspaper or like remember you see ever you see photos of like reporters from like the 60s and they have like the big hats and the suits like i think if you if most jobs don't require suits it was just sort of people used to wear mm -hmm. suits on airplanes yes <laughs> not yeah. even forward oh my god <laughs> they just dress more formally <laughs> i when i was on co-op i because in my mind i was thinking the same thing like i'm going to work for an accounting firm like you know there's important people there dressed to the nines and I went and my firm had sort of a dress for your day policy where most partners would show up wearing something probably very similar to what Noah's wearing right now if they didn't have any like client meetings or anything, um, which was very weird to me. But especially now with working from home too, I feel like everything's just gotten much more casual. Um, like I can't see myself suiting up for work even once I go back full time. Probably not going to happen. I, yeah, I think my, I remember my dad got a job. This was like 10 years ago and they did require suits every day and he had like one so he spent like a grand on like five suits and after a year there was like a new president and he deleted that oh, no. dress code and my dad's like now well, i got really that suits. i mean that whole the dress code thing is a bit of an equity issue too uh from like a like a barrier to entry deal right like it definitely is exclusionary to have like because they're expensive stringent dress requirements because yeah. of the because of the price and like just the accessibility of that to people, especially at the start of your job to require people to spend thousand or more mm -hmm. dollars on clothes, right? Like, like I have before they've even been paid, let alone still requiring them to use the 
little money you give them to buy clothes you to have, go to work. It's how like, many like how many suits do you have? Zero. Oh really? Okay, I have one. <laughs> I'm like that's absolutely it. I have like different colored dress pants and like a one sport jacket, like different like pieces. Like, right, right, right. Suits are not necessarily. I don't know. It's just not. Again, everything's just kind of more casual. Like even yeah. weddings. Like I was in a wedding two years ago, and no, last summer, not this summer, but the summer before, and uh, we just did dress pants and a white shirt and like than like a tie or whatever, mm -hmm. like no suit to it at all. Yeah. That seems very tied to the nine to five strict 40 hour work weeks, right? Yeah. Where now you can, I mean, like it's, we, I think we talked about this once on a podcast a few weeks ago, but like our job in particular is like very random hours <laughs> and especially like with Spima, many of the jobs in that industry are random hours, yep. like 6 PM to like 2 AM out, like just at, side yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, at random times rather than a set schedule. It's kind of nice. I love that. I Honestly, do too. I definitely thrive on. That might be like an indication that I have like a mental health problem, but I love just like <laughs> I love working like twelve hours in a row until I like crash at my computer. Oh. I think that means I have issues, but I just kind of work better that way. So like my Mondays and Tuesdays are just nuts and just so long, but then like the rest of my week is just kind of. I just kind of like plug in and out at like random, random times. And I seem to function on it at the very least. <laughs> at least I'm functioning. <laughs> at so least Noah I, just thrives on chaos. Is a little I'm bit. A little bit. This. In certain ways. <laughs> and that does it for another episode of The Latest. Thank you to uh, Jonah and Damani for joining me to talk about these great articles today. And thank you all for listening. We really appreciate it. Remember that you can find the full articles that we talked about here today and many, many more by going to our website, www.brockpress.com. Uh, you can also find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. On top of following us on social media, be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, and Radio Public. Just be sure to look up the latest The Brock Press Podcast and you should find us with no issues you can also find the podcast on our youtube channel and on our website with all that said thanks again and we'll see you next week for another episode